Well, hey there, and welcome back to the Drawing Database. Professor Mark Leone this morning, and we're going to spend 15 minutes with Paul Gauguin, the French post-impressionist painter who left Paris to go to French Polynesia and spend the, the latter, the middle to latter part of his years making art in French Polynesia. He was born in 1848 in Paris and then died in 1903, um, I believe, and in, in, in also uh, uh, the Polynesia area, the French Polynesian area. So let's get started with the drawing. So Gauguin is primarily known as a, um, a moody mythological colorist with French Polynesian um, stylings and ideas and certainly figures figurations into the vein of his art. Um, and we know the story of, of Gauguin, I won't go into that, but let's go into the drawings a little bit. An idiosyncratic draftsman that was somewhat self-taught, he was also an attorney, and left his family in that profession to go make art in Polynesia. So um, you can judge that as you will. The drawing in front of us here is a figure, nude female figure, in a hatched and also cross-hatched uh, style and we see it in ink pen here um, and the uh, uh, styling is is learned with some uh, some peculiarities if you will into the face area the nose is a little bit slightly pushed this way which is a little bit awkward so it's three-dimensional but there are some issues with a little bit I think a little too hard edged and through here and so on but again Gauguin the styling's world famous Gauguin we want to take a look at um, the drawings, whether they're crude or whether they're simple or whether they're sophisticated, um, is a judgment call. But certainly the, the drawing is competent uh, with, again, the stylings of hatching. You can see one directional kind of hatching to render the form in its various rhythmic movements. Then he comes along. And we also see the lattice, if you will, work of not only hatching but also cross-hatching into a kind of hashtag look. So anytime you see that kind of mark, you can kind of think of our modern day use of the hashtag, if you will. Here we see an image of um, more academic approach, if you, uh, if you will, in charcoal and some pastel. I believe this is the image of Jacob wrestling an angel, um, or to that effect um, with um, young, younger Dutch type uh, dressed women or farm girls if you will and so we see a very a really quite learned um, study of uh, a drawing with again uh, more of an academic feel with more three-dimensional volumetric stylings and form in the uh, the line weight variation that he gets into into the uh, tonalities of the line, uh, also the variation of the line weight and also the line length to describe form, and then putting on some con cross contouring and getting the feeling of cloth variation moving through, and then color in the background, kind of a cool sort of forest green, and then a relatively flatter face but a really strong accurate profile with just a little cheekbone to give us a little bit more 3D and then a hand study in through here it looks a little certainly like um, a more Flemish uh, almost a, a, a study uh, and a page of uh, studies. In this particular uh, image of a French Polynesian uh, young lady this we get into more quintessential iconic Gauguin, and we see the Polynesian styling of the woman, the longer hair, the, the uh, more uh, Polynesian features of the of the head and face, and then the rendering which looks to be in graphite. So probably done uh, from life, from observation, maybe a lover, um, certainly looks to, to be one of many that he took in French Polynesia, but it has an academic style, um, but some flatness goes on. It begins to uh, get into the aspect of Gauguin's work, which was flat, but also um, rich in terms of moody uh, color, uh, mythological kind of color, or intense dark moods in dreamlike states of uh, almost a surreal kind of foreboding 
and um, uh, foreshortening, uh, excuse me, foreshadowing, that's the word I'm looking for, into um, surrealism later on. But it's the color, but it's also the rendering. Notice that he's relaxing some of his academic understanding um, and then getting some dimensionality with tonality in, in the uh, graphite as he uh, uses uh, the hatching marks or the tip of the pencil that you can see the directional flow some uh, uh, value pushing uh, darker into the eyes some three-dimensionality into the eyes and then some understanding of head structure and then some blending with probably a stump or a finger in the soft uh, softer passages as well it reminds us also of Vilga uh, Gauguin and uh, certainly they were um, uh, friends contemporaries in their um, uh, more self-expressed, deeper internal emotions and moods. Here what looks to be a combination of techniques, kind of a rubbing to get some textures and frottage. Frottage uh, was developed by, by uh, Max Ernst, another French artist. This might actually be before before Max Ernst, but it looks like a rubbing when you get some textural uh, qualities with the paper held on a textured surface and then you rub a material on top of that. Um, it could well be a print, as a lithograph with the color. Um, that's a uh, possibility too. What we do have is a, a dual tone drawing of some uh, ochre type of uh, yellow ochre color um, uh, mixed in with looks to be charcoal or some kind of chalk and to a drawing and here we get again more of a Gauguin uh, subject matter of nude uh, French Polynesian women in uh, kind of a moody dreamlike affectation of a, perhaps a mask or a demon or some kind of midnight beast as well and the drawing has a nice sense of fl uh, flatness but also ironically a sense of light and three-dimensionality into the breast forms the deep dark value that works really well the rhythm of the uh, drawing stroke really starts to move us uh, through and around uh, the composition the uh, extra thick arms and legs that he uh, employs with his uh, subject work and then the way he allows some of the color to come through in the value stylings I think is really nice let's take a look at that right in this area this modeled area with some darker value with the ochre value and then the separation of the two forms as they kind of mold together are really nice and then we have some sort of architectural iconic images here as well so there's a really nice blending of both these um, uh, figures in the technique of uh, expressive drawing and color uh, uh, boldly added in a, in a sort of illogical and more expressive way. This looks to be a page of studies of young women and heads, maybe the same woman, and we see it go back to a more academic atelier kind of uh, style. You'll see him uh, oscillate between those uh, approaches, the more refined Gauguin in the uh, latter stages of his career or the mature part of his career and then certainly the uh, more um, academic type work of studies. This, this certainly favors the more academic approach. We have the larger head in through here and the head structure really works nicely overall into the styling of the figure with the oval right in the center line and we see all the, the processes there, the wider nose uh, in through there and then lovely stylings of the blending of the charcoal and then laying the charcoal down um, and allowing it to do uh, its work on its own and then some uh, cutting in with tighter line crisp line to give it a give it a, a crisper edge which also flattens it out since he leaves the line on its own in some areas which has a tendency to flat it but it is very soft and gradually flows across the forms and then he has some profile here of the head and then another drawing down below to uh, as well to get the certainly get the profile uh, in as well on the other side and then lastly, this one favors the other drawing that we saw. Again, the same similar kind of approach with a, two figures, a male and a female here, one with a mask, perhaps an important elder or tribesman or doctor or spiritual advisor with the, with the horned kind of mask. 
um, and then the female here in a more dominant warrior approach. Notice how he, he generally tends to cut them off at mid-waist or mid-chest, if you will, and then um, drawing with charcoal and some rubbing and the texture here that, again, they could be prints and they could be drawn on prints, but it does look to be charcoal. Uh, it does look to be heavily line-oriented. In the beginning with the flatter kind of line and then also some anatomy <clears throat> relaxing as well and then the beautiful stylings of both the <clears throat> of both the heads in uh, a semi three-dimensional uh, reduced kind of quality so the uh, influence of Polynesian uh, art and design is starting to uh, certainly influence or is influencing Gauguin with some flatness here and then still three-dimensionality that he strived for um, as he worked within a kind of uh, flattening that really again um, does uh, for uh, uh, foreshadow uh, uh, Cezanne and certainly um, uh, cubism right and then uh, the wonderful stylings of the hatched marks of the spiked kind of hair which gives her a real sort of intense and fierce look doesn't it it's really really fascinating with the lovely choker that's drawn in through here so a simple use of value about two two or three values this darker value the lighter value of the background color and some styling and really the white of the paper with some lovely line and then some some uh, well placed timely hatch marks to do some shading works quite nice. So there we have it, some in, inside uh, drawing information on Paul Colgan.